Hello everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to use data stores. So data stores are used to save player data. So if it wasn't for data stores, then your data would not be saved on Roblox. For example, the amount of coins you have, that wouldn't save. The, the pets you have, you would lose those pets. And items you have, same thing, none of your data would be saved without data stores. So there are two types of data stores global data stores and order data stores. Global data stores actually save the player's data. Order data stores um, are used for leaderboards and stuff. So we're going to mainly focus on in global data stores because those are, the, those are the main data stores and uh, order data stores are usually less important. So yeah. Okay, so let's first start off by creating a script. And for example, we're going to create a leaderboard that contains our cache and then we're going to set that cache to whatever and then um, we're going to leave the game and then rejoin and it's going to have that in the cache well, saved. Okay, so first we're going to start off with the player added function. So added, and then we're going to set uh, player as the variable and then yeah. So we're first going to create the leaderboard. So local leaderboard equals it's not new. We're going to create a folder inside the player. We're going to um, yeah. We're going to name that um, folder as leader stats. It has to be exactly like that, otherwise it's not going to work. And then we're going to create our cache. So we're going to do instance.new. We're going to create an integer value and set that and put that inside the leaderboard. And then cache. That's going to be okay. Uh, cache that we're going to set that name to cache. And then yeah. So now we have now if we would just test now we would just have our cache at right here and it's set to zero because we don't have any value set to it yet. Okay, so now we're going to get data store service. I'm just gonna abbreviate to DSS. We're gonna use game get service. Uh, we're gonna do data store service. So now we have our data store service thing, and now we're gonna create a data store. So data store, we will do DSS, get data store, and then we're gonna set our get data store name. So um, this could just be player data or cache, or it can be whatever. And yeah, um, there's also uh get global data store. So and it looks like that uh right here, but that's not that's basically the same thing. So now we. Now there's a there's I'm gonna be talking about something that a lot of people don't really talk about. It's this scope right here, and what this is is like a folder for this data store. So like let's pretend data store is a folder, and we're putting folders inside that folder. So to keep things organized, you know, so you could do like player data as the data store name, and then you can have a folder for cache or a folder folder for items. Or for pets yeah that's that's kind of like what a scope is used but if you don't have a scope set then it would just uh, set to uh, global as the default so now we're going to make a p call so we're going to do local success error message equals p call um, function now if you don't know what a p call is used for uh, a p call basically let's say whatever codes inside the p call if it breaks then it will uh stop it from breaking the rest of the script and yeah and it will throw out an error message right here and then the success tells you if it was a success or not so yeah um one good way to do this is by uh doing look we can just set these two values to nil and then we could do um success or we can do repeat um, success error message equals p call function and then we can do yeah so and then here we can actually get the data okay and then we can do until success and what this will do is it will keep trying retrying this code until it acts until it works Sometimes it breaks for several reasons. Uh, probably the most common is uh, from uh, uh, the data store being overloaded, from a lot of data being taken in and stuff. 
So yeah, um, we can also do local uh, retries equals zero. So if there's an error message, if error message, then um, we can do retries uh, plus equals one, which is the same as equals retries plus one. Um, okay, so we can do that. And then we can uh, print the error message or we can do uh, warn so yeah um so if it reaches the max retries then it will stop repeating so we can do if it we will keep repeating until it's a success or when the retries reaches a max amount so we do greater than equals to eight so we can set the max retries to eight and then we could probably add like a weight um, one so that way it doesn't try to retry it as fast as it can because that might just you know, make the error it just will probably keep error erroring if it happens so yeah um okay so actually let's put that inside here okay let's do local key equals and the key is basically determines where this data is or like what data it's trying to get so let's say there's a lot of data in this data store and it's trying to figure out it's trying to specify which one it is and we use that through a key the best key type is through the player user id um some people uh like to put some some text in the beginning like user or like player or something uh i it can be whatever you want but i recommend you put player dot user id somewhere so that way it, spec it specifies which key it is. Now we're going to use uh, a function called uh, data called um, get async, and get async just returns the data. And if there's no data, then it will just not return anything. So we're going to put the key in, and then it should return that data. So we can do if data then and then else. So basically. In this column, it means uh, the the player has data, and then here it means the player is new to the game; it has no data set. Okay, so basically we can just set the cache value to the data, and then we're going to just set the cache value here to just 100 if they're new to the game. Okay, so now we're gonna do the pl a player removing function that fires when the player leaves the game, and then we're gonna set um, player also as the variable we're also going to copy and paste the key right here because it has to be the exact same and then we can uh, we can just copy this code as well here and then uh oh yeah and then we copy this here as well you know to make sure that no one's data is lost or anything so yeah okay so we can uh, we can uh, remove that and stuff so we're gonna get the data so we can do a local data and then we're going to get uh the cache value so we can do play that leader stats and then dot cache dot value so we're get getting the player we're getting to the leader stats folder and we're getting the value from the cache so yeah and then we can just use a function called uh set async which just sets or changes the the data to whatever the, the, the data you input and if there's no data for that key yet then it will create new data for that key so we're gonna set the first uh, argument as the key and then we're gonna set the second one to the data I almost forgot to do this part so we're going to increment uh, our cache so we can do while wait and do or actually just one second so every one second uh, it's going to it's, it's going to um change the cash value uh, by up by a hundred so we can just do plus equal a hundred okay so now when the player joins and they don't have data then they're just their cash value is just gonna be set to 100 but if they do that have it data then the cash value is gonna be set to that data and then every second um, we're going to increment that cash value by 100 okay so by the way um data stores only work if the game is actually published so yeah, anyways, we started off by 100, and now we're incrementing up by 100, so yeah. Um, so if we just leave the game now, we should be expecting about like $1,200, um, 
for our cash thing so hopefully that that's what we get so if we join back then as you can see we start off by a 1200 cash and it's incrementing up so yeah as you can see it's actually working okay so so um you can actually uh you can only um test data stores in studio if you have um a api services enabled otherwise it's not gonna work and uh yeah i i also don't recommend testing in what well, studio because uh player added events and player removing events are pretty don't work uh every time like in studio especially player removing uh so if you're only saving data like me through uh player added and player removing events then i don't i don't recommend you uh, you testing in studio i t recommend you testing the real game okay and you might be wondering how do people save pets or items or whatever and to to answer that we're going to need to get http service so we're going to just do http it goes game get service http service and what this will do is you see in a minute so let's create a table or yeah let's create a table um we're going to put our data in the table so when we get that data uh, we shouldn't the cache should be data one because that's the first thing in the table so that's what we're going to receive okay so now here's what http uh does so we're going to use a function called um json encode and this is going to convert uh the the table or dictionary into a string or or like a json string which we we will then decode back into a lua table or dictionary so let's say if we if we do in fact have data then we're going to set that data to a decoded version of that data or json decode and then we're going to do data so it's going to convert the json string back into a table and then we're going to set this to data one because that's the first thing in the in our table like i said so um we can test this um make sure to publish it actually did some errors because uh i cha we changed the data from a number to a table and i didn't remove my data so it caused an error but as you can see it's working so if we leave right now and rejoin it's going to work and we will yeah okay so let's and as you can see it saves again so basically um you can also add multiple things in the table like uh for example like uh you can do example here or you can do 120 uh hello and it's going to save that as well and then you can get that stuff like uh, data two which will receive 120, and then data three will will receive hello. And yeah, that's just your information for ta tables and stuff. However, for dictionaries, we can uh, set a variable or a property for this dictionary thing. So you can do cash equals uh, the player cash and and this would look like a data cache like that and then it will receive the player cache and that's the difference between tables and dictionaries if you were wondering again you can have multiple things like uh, you do name equals player that name stuff like that you can and it works so yeah that's uh, your information of how uh, game save stuff like pets or tables uh, they save the name of the pet and then they um they get the data of the pet name and then they take the pet and clone it into the play into the player stuff and then they have the pet and yeah that's that's basically how how um they do stuff like that i hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh i hope you learned something new i hope this helps you and yeah bye